The Camino de Santiago is an ancient pilgrimage route that has been traveled by millions of people for over a thousand years. For many, walking the Camino is a life-changing experience, a test of endurance and a chance to connect with something greater than themselves. I'm Sandy. And I'm Jed. Join us on our epic journey as we attempt to walk over 500 miles across Spain. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I know last night I said we'd tell you whether we're moving on, and in fact we are. Destination for today is gonna be Navarrete, not Navarrete. Like I said, I apologize, my Spanish isn't the greatest, but good news, Sandy has uh, sent her pack ahead, and uh, should be an easy day, maybe two, three hours, or about just over 12 kilometers, I think we have for the day. Hoping for an easy day anyway. Feeling pretty beat up after the long slog to La Coronio yesterday, so <sighs> let's do it. As we left Logroño this morning, you know, you're going through the city. It's a lot of pavement and stuff, and then it kind of leads to this beautiful park where people are walking and stuff, which eventually leads to a beautiful lake. The sun's shining, people are out here. There's lots of cool wildlife, like birds. I love birds. But they also have, like, the world's cutest squirrels. They kind of remind me of the Kaibab squirrels out in the southwest, where they have, like, the fur on their ears that's, like, super up, kind of looks like horns. There's signs all over the place saying, don't feed the squirrels, but the squirrels, uh, you know, they don't, they can't read. So, I mean, they, they will, uh, they'll look cute and beg you for food. I'm trying to be respectful, so sorry squirrels. You guys are awesome, but no food for you from us today. So we are almost in Navarrete, and as you come into Navarrete, you will see the remains of an old pilgrim's hospital that used to tend to pilgrims in the Middle Ages. Also, gracias, you will also see the Don Jacobo Winery, which also tells you that you are almost in Navarrete. A couple of cool things that you're gonna see before uh, you get into town. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Day, oh, hey. <laughs> not, what is this, day nine, day 10? I'm not even sure I, I don't even point. know anymore, but we are in the little town of Navarrete, and we see that this really nice little albergue that we really enjoyed last night. It's called um, Albergue El Cantado. Cantada. Cantaro. Yeah, nice and clean. Uh, got some laundry done, hung it out to dry. It was a bit rainy last night, and it's actually a bit rainy this morning. Uh, actually feels good after so much sun in the last couple of days. I'm, I'm going to take it. We have just about over <clears throat> 20 kilometers to make today. 22. 22. Azofra. We're headed to Azofra. We're actually going to stay in our first municipal albergue ever, because we've never stayed in, well, no, I guess even, not. even on the last I guess not. Day, you know? So we're going to stay there, and right now the knee is doing okay. See how it does along the way. I'm ibuprofened up. We're going to try to stay dry and just you know, make it to his Ofra. That's the goal. Let's go. So we just had quite the uh, downpour of rain. Out came the ponchos. If you look in the back here, I don't know if you can see it. There's a there's a town back here called Mentosa. It was on the original way. On our last Camino, we stayed there. It's it's actually a beautiful little town. We're not stopping there today because we're trying to mix things up a little bit, different from our last Camino. This place is absolutely just covered in just vineyards and rolling hills. So the view this morning is absolutely gorgeous, even if it is a bit chilly and at least the sun's not beating down on us and frying us. So gotta look at the positive, right? town of Nahara to grab a drink and a bite to eat and we stumbled upon this wine festival behind us. We're really regretting that we have to go another six kilometers where we would have loved to join in on the festivities. This place is really lively. It's a Saturday so people seem to be really having a good time. But that's one of the beautiful things on the Camino is that uh, last time we also stumbled upon stuff like this and it's great if you can, you know, 
Join in on the festivities. Unfortunately today, we just don't have the time. We have to push on. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Day number 6,348 million from the Camino de Santiago. We are leaving the tiny town of Azofra this morning. Um, win Camino. Anywho, yesterday we marched the last six kilometers in from Nahara to Azofra, went to the municipal albergue and saw the dreaded sign, Completo. So, which means they're full. They're absolutely full. And the crazy thing is, is Azofra is known to be kind of an overflow town. They always tend to have beds here, you know, so if you can't get something in one of the surrounding towns, you come to Azofra, but full. Everything was full. So the place we stayed last night, it was super fancy, guys. Thankfully, they had a room, so it was a little pricier, but it was actually a really nice break. It was a very, very nice little hotel. I can't remember the name of it right now. <laughs> it was the Real... So it's De Las Amas. Right. Yes. Yeah, so it was, it was <laughs> that. that one. Now, now I'm going to have to switch, switch arms. So... I'm gonna be over here. <laughs> Making sure he gets an even muscle workout today. I'm telling you. I hope you guys appreciate this. This stuff is heavy, by the way. <laughs> My arms get tired. All right, guys, enough complaining. No, that, that, so this, this hotel is probably beyond the normal pilgrim's budget, which is fine. I mean. It was a nice little break. Except for tonight. Maybe we're having another nice little break. We're also having a nice another break, but we'll, we'll see that when we get there. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's going to be a light day of about 16, 17 kilometers a day, so uh, let's just get it. in the town of Seruania and it's like a golf town. Uh, there's actually a golf resort here that you can stop by. They actually welcome pilgrims. They have like breakfast, foods, snacks, and bathrooms. Given that we only have six more kilometers from here, final destination of Santo Domingo today. I decided to stop off, you know, use the bathroom, grab a couple of sandwiches. Sandy grabbed a uh, tortilla, always a solid choice on the Camino, and just hang out for a while because tonight's place is really special. Santo Domingo and that's going to be our stopping point for today. We are staying at a super luxurious place called the Parador Hotel. In the 15th century it was actually a hospice for pilgrims. So it's actually kind of creepy but this hotel is actually really really beautiful and it's kind of pricey but you know what kind of deserve it. I mean I feel like we deserve it. But we've already showered, put our laundry away, slapped some compete on those blisters so that we can go and see chickens that live in the church. That's right, the cluck stops here. That was the best joke ever. That was the absolute best joke ever. Come on, Jed, we're going to the chicken church. I think we have some explaining about the chicken church. So the chicken church is kind of like a nickname because of the story called the hanged innocent. So a German pilgrim family passed through this town and the innkeeper's daughter made a pass at their son who being such a virtuous gentleman said, uh-uh, you know, I'm a virtuous fellow. At that point, she planted some silver pieces from the church on him and then alerted the officials, hey, this guy's a thief. So they hung him in the square and the family, of course, moved on. Now, on the way back from Santiago, the family went to see their poor son's body, which was hanging there, only to discover he was alive and well. He told them that the saint had lifted him up and kept him alive. So the family were so excited they went to tell the officials. Now the officials were like, hey, you know, um, that's kind of unbelievable. 
If that's the case, then these chickens will just jump up and just come back alive. At which point, the chickens did. They reanimated and started running around, regrowing feathers, squawking the whole nine. So this is why to this very day, there are two chickens inside the church. Thus the nickname, the Chicken Church. So as part of your admission to the cathedral, you can also climb to the top of the bell tower, which we had no idea you could do. And the last time we came through here, you weren't able to, as far as we know. But this is absolutely amazing. We made it all the way to the top. I know, we're crazy. We walked all day and then <laughs> we want to climb to the top of a bell tower. But look at this. It's amazing. All these bells are just gorgeous. And we met this guy in the stairway. He didn't speak a lot of English, but he said that the system that rings these bells is like the only one left and it's from like the 16th century which is absolutely incredible to see so this is really one of a kind on the next episode of wonderful revolution our journey across spain continues so make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a single step until next time stay wonderful call it a day